tonight we'll continue as usual the topic we've been talking about, about for a while now stepping into a season of fruitfulness text John 12 verse 24 says most assuredly I say unto you unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies it remains alone but if it dies it produces much grain from this particular point you know that fruitfulness is God's ultimate desire for us and he wants us to produce much grain and the one thing that quickly becomes clear to us as we seek to fulfill God's desire is the discovery that we can only do so much without God's help. Seeing as God has designed our fruitfulness around himself. Even as Christ said that without me, you can do nothing. That's John 15 verse 5. The primary way in which we receive in, uh, divine input that results in fruitfulness is true is what to us. So, apart from his logos or written word, God also speaks his rhema or living word to us to direct us to our fruitfulness. Jesus again confirmed this fact in John 10 verse 27, which states that my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. This proves that the fruitful have the capacity to hear and to heed God's voice. And it is this capacity that makes them fruitful. The unfruitful lack capacity to hear God or even to heed his word, hence their unfruitfulness. To both hear and heed God's voice requires us to have ears and the capacity to hear. Having the first, that is, having ears, does not automatically confer the ability or the capacity to hear upon us. Because not all who have ears hear, a condition that is known as deafness. And in the same way that we have physical deafness, the spiritual equivalent also exists. There is something called spiritual deafness where we can't hear God speak to us. We can have ears that lack the ability to hear, thus defeating the purpose of their existence. The purpose of an eye is to see, yet not all eyes see. The purpose of an ear is to hear, but not all ears hear. The implication is that the mere existence of the facility, that is the ear, does not imply possession of the faculty, that is the ability to hear. A facility is defined as a place, amenity or piece of equipment provided for a particular purpose. For the purpose of hearing, this is the ear. The most prominent attribute of which is the pinna or the external ear, that's, that's always pointing out. Its purpose is to collect sound waves and direct it to the working parts of the ear, that is the inner ear. It is possible, but less efficient, to have a working inner ear without the outer ear. But if the inner ear malfunctions, then it would not matter if you have the outer ear. You will not be able to hear, proving that you need the facility that is an ear in order to hear. A faculty, on the other hand, denotes an inherent mental or physical power. It is an aptitude for doing something or a natural ability to hear, to see, to think, or to move. A special ability to do a particular thing. That's what a faculty is. Your faculties are your physical and mental abilities. It is the mental aptitude and not a physical attribute which makes it more interesting than a facility, for it implies the ability to hear without a, phys a physical ear or to see without an eye. The blind, deaf, and dumb who lack the, is like a, who lack eyes, who, who lack ears, and a, a, is like, uh, who, who can't speak. They have the physical facilities that enables them to hear and speak because they have been trained to use their faculties for these purposes. And that enables them to effect effectively interact with their surroundings. So even without an eye, a blind can see, they can read, and they can do things by deploying their extra senses and resources that the seeing and the hearing often take for granted and overlook. 
The implication is that it is possible to have physical eyes and still not be able to see, and ears that do not hear. The opposite is that it is also possible to be blind and still be able to see by deploying your inherent faculties that enables interaction with the environment through the use of your senses. And the same applies to the deaf, who lack the facility for hearing, even if they possess the physical attributes that would have made this possible when functioning properly. The Bible is replete with warnings confirming the possession of faculty as opposed to um, or facility as, as opposed to the faculty. Jeremiah 5.21 states that, Hear this now, O foolish people without understanding, who have eyes and see not, and who have ears that hear not. <clears throat> Revelation 2.29 says that, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. This again emphasizes the fact that a spiritual ear is a prerequisite for hearing the voice of the Spirit, implying that it is impossible to have it is possible to have physical ears but lack spiritual ears or spiritual hearing ability. By the way, the reverse is also true. The physically blind or deaf, they can possess the spiritual faculties that enables them to both see and hear God, since spiritual acuity is a function of divine ability within us and not just a product of physical ability. In the sense that our ability to hear the voice of God is not dependent on whether we have the physical ability to hear. Somebody who has never had any voice in their mind, in their life, if they train their spirit to hear, to hear God's voice, they will hear it. So the real question is, how do you acquire this ability to hear from God? or to see what God wants to see. It is by the impartation of the grace of God. Grace is the difference between having spiritual ears that confers the ability to hear God and not being able to hear God. Those who lack this ability are able to hear the word of God, but they struggle, struggle to comprehend it because they lack the innate ability to understand it. For example, when God confronted Saul of Tarsus as he was pursuing the Christians, he was on his way to, to Damascus to persecute them, only he was able to hear clearly hear what God said. Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Why do you kick against the goat? When the others that were with him, when they were asked, did you hear anything? They said, we just heard like there was a, a sound, like there was thunder, but we didn't hear anything. Why? Because they did not have, God did not give them the ability or the capacity to hear God. So it is as if God's word is scrambled or scrambled to them. So while they could see that something was going on, they lacked the inner capacity to understand and do not necessarily know what it was and could therefore not take full advantage of it. And Saul did. Only Saul was inherently graced with understanding. And grace provided the code that unscrambled everyone's communication, thus enabling him to partake of his goodness. You see, the difference between those who are Christians and those who are not is the grace of God. It is because God has given us the capacity to understand and to accept that we are sinners and that we are sinners that are saved by grace. Everybody else will argue with you. Why? Because they can't see. They don't understand. So it is upon this spiritual foundation of the spiritual facility and spiritual faculty, that is grace, that we build the ability that enables us to comprehend God's voice. For example, in Isaiah verse, uh, Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21, it says, You shall hear, your ears shall hear a word behind you, saying, 
This is the way. Walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right hand or whenever you turn to the left. Psalms 41, verse 6, verse 1 states that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. So, how does God send His help when we are in need? It is by speaking His word into our ears. He said that we shall hear a word behind us saying, This is the way, walk in it. Why? Because God is ever present. Is very close. He can speak to our ears from, from behind us. Say, hey, go that way. He will effectively teleguide our steps by his word and direct us as to what needs doing to deliver our fruitfulness to us. This was the point that Jesus Christ was saying when he said that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That's Matthew 4. 4. Your ultimate fruitfulness is impacted by whatever communication you receive fresh from the mouth of God. This implies God speaking and you hearing and eating. If God speaks and you hear, but you do not heed, it is the same thing. God's word will not benefit you. God must necessarily speak and you must necessarily hear and heed his word in that order before it will translate into fruitfulness in your life. Because God's words are designed both to be heard and to be heeded. Jacob was in dire straits and needed to hear from God. His uncle Laban was hell-bent on reducing him to nothingness as opposed to the fruitfulness God had promised him. Jacob needed to turn the tide of unfruitfulness in his life and servitude. And he needed God to speak to and get him out of his trouble. So he sought the Lord earnestly in prayer. In Genesis 30, that's chapter 30 and 31, God responded to Jacob's plea by speaking to him in a dream, in which he told Jacob what he needed to do to get out of his quagmire. Jacob had a hearing ear, that is, the ability to hear God's voice and understood its intent. But he was also willing to do whatever God told him. So he acted on God's word, and in doing so, heeded him. The result of his obedience was that God turned his captivity into blessing, and in the fullness of time, delivered Jacob from the grasping claws of his greedy uncle, and led him back to his inheritance in Canaan. Through hearing and eating the word of God, Jacob prospered and turned adversity into prosperity because he knew what to do or what had to be done after God had spoken to him. The reason the sons of Issachar were, is like they were important to David was because they knew the signs of the times and what Israel ought to do to achieve victory. 1 Chronicles 12.42 God's revelation is the insider of privileged information we receive that enables us to acquire the necessary advantage to supersede our enemies and overwhelm our competition. For the step of the righteous, they are ordered of God. Psalms 37, verse 3. Now, by telling us which way to go and whether we should go left or right, whether we should wait or we should move, it is the specificity of God's word to us that clarifies what we need to do. And once we do them, His grace will ensure that the intent of His word for us becomes the reality we experience to the glory of His name. That is how we become fruitful. For His words are not only light to our darkness, but also enlightens us as to what we need to do and where we need to go in order for God's word to come true in our lives. So, how do you know, or let me do this way, do you know that God speaks to his children to direct them? If you can answer that, yes, then bless you. Do you know how God speaks to you as a person? Can you say, ah, this is how God speaks to me? If you can say that, then you are blessed. As a sheep, can you recognize his voice and thus be able to heed it? Do you know 
God's voice to you? Those are the questions you need to ask yourself. Because they are the ones that determine whether it's like when God speaks and says, go to the right, and you look to the right, and there's a train that is coming in the place where you're going to go, you want, you want to question and say, God, did you, are you sure it was God that spoke? Because there are sometimes God will speak to you. The only reason you will go is because you trust his voice. Because when you look at what's ahead, you start shaking your head and say, God, are you sure you mean what you say, what you're saying? So you've got to be able to recognize his voice and then eat it. Do you have the both the facility as well as the faculty to hear God's voice? That is, do you have your spiritual ear? Have you trained that spiritual ear to be able to understand when God is speaking? You know, because when things are tough, it is whatever God has spoken to you that will keep you going. When God decides to let lead you in a way is like that you don't know, you don't understand, you don't appreciate and you are fearful. It is just because, ah, God, you've spoken. That's where I'm going. You know, I used to ask myself years ago, how come Abraham was able to know that it was God that told him, kill Isaac for me? It was because he knew God's voice. When you know God's voice, you will know when God is speaking to you. You will be able to deny it. So the answers that you give to all of the above questions will determine whether you lead an unfruitful life of regret or a life of maximized fruitfulness. Revelations 2.17 says that he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to his church. The question is this, is that you? Do you have the ear? Do you know what the Spirit is saying to his church? Do you know what the Spirit is saying to you? As we kick off our prayer, we are going to pray on this particular point. Father, I know that it is you who works in me both to will and to do of your good pleasure. Grace me today with the ability to hear and the willingness to do and also heed your word so that I can thereby walk into my ordained fruitfulness to the glory of your name. You are my shepherd. Speak to me as your sheep, so that in knowing your voice, I will not be distracted by the voices of the thieves who seek to steal, to kill, and to destroy my destiny. Lead me in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. Let us pray. So she will send the cash in the world of Carabato, so she will go to the social media, and to go to the other side. She will go to the social media. He that art and hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. It is one thing to have the facilities, you can have the hear. It is another thing to be able to use that facility to hear anything. The fact that you have an ear does not mean that you have, does mean, it mean that you, it's like you have the ability. Many people have ears, but they don't hear. The complaint that God made against his own people was that, look, you have ears, but you can't hear. You have eyes, you can't see. So of what use are ears that can't hear? Of what use are eyes that can't see? So I want you to pray tonight. Father, give me eyes that can see to see into the Spirit. Give me ears that can hear. Hmm. You know, as, as, as I was just talking, you know what just came to my mind? Do you know that when God wanted to answer the prayer of Elijah on Mount Carmel, you know what he said? I hear the sound of rain coming. I hear the sound of rain. He hadn't even seen it. He had it first. Why? Because he had the capacity and also that ear was sensitive. What that means is that there are some things that will happen that God will just give us the senses to know, ah, something is about to happen. Go this way. Act this way. Do this thing. Do that. And then we will be fruitful. So let us pray. Father, Lord, whatever it takes for me to have a hearing here, 
whatever it takes for me, Lord God, to have seen eyes. Lord God, whatever it takes, Lord God, for my senses to be sharp so that I can communicate with you. I'll be able to hear you say, go to the right, go to the left. Lord, give it to me today in Jesus' mighty name. Let us pray. in Jesus mighty name we have prayed you know, last Sunday we talked about God's word it says once has God spoken twice have I heard if we are going to hear God when he speaks once and we're going to hear it twice it must be because we are hearing capacity is sensitive is able to understand is able to pick what God says so that God will only speak once and once he's spoken it's like we catch it the problem with many of us is that we is like we make God repeat himself too much we do not listen and what happens is that it's like a hearing is dull. Why is it dull? Because in the past, when God has spoken to us, we've not, it's like we've never been in that situation where we're able to catch it. So God has to repeat himself. Sometimes when God has spoken in the past, we had him quite all right, but we refused to do it. And what happens is that when God speaks once, when God speaks twice, when God speaks thrice, and he sees that we are not valuing what he's saying, it will start reducing his voice. At that some time, he may even stop speaking. So I want us to pray. I say, Lord, in the past where, oh Lord God, I have caused you to speak more than once in order for me to, to be able to obey you. Oh Lord God, I repent today. Grant me back that facility. Grant me back that faculty that makes it my hearing sharp, so sharp, that even when you just whisper something, I will know, I will hear you, and I'll be able to hear you. Father, Lord God, anything that has clogged my spiritual hearing, Lord, clear it out tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Father, Lord God, recreate, oh Lord God, between me and you, the communication, the way you want it to be, so that when you speak, I will hear your voice. Oh Lord God, when you direct me, I will know what to do. Let's pray in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, Bashankaraba, oh, In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. You know, one thing about God is this. God never wastes his time. Whatever he creates, whatever he designs, is always for a purpose. You see, God gives us hands so that we can use those hands to do things, to live things. 
God has given us legs so that those legs can carry us wherever. Every part of our bodies have a specific purpose for it. In the spiritual realm, God has also given us the capacity to hear. He has given us the capacity to see. So, of what purpose, of what use are those capacities? If God has given us here and we can't hear, if God has given us eyes and we can't see, it is because we do not, we are not able to deploy these capacities. That's why the enemy is cheating us. Remember the story of Elisha and his servants when they were in Dothan? When the king of Syria sent a horde of armies, heavily armed people, to oh, go and surround the city, arrest that man and bring him to me because he's revealing all my secrets to my enemies. And they came during the night and they surrounded the place. And in the morning, when the servant of, of, of Elisha woke up and he went out and he saw that they were surrounded, he ran back and said, Father, Father, we are in trouble, we are dead men. Why? He said, ah, We are surrounded. And Elisha said, Father, open his eyes. Open his eyes so that he'll be able to see that we are not alone, that those who are with us are more than those who are with them. So we have no reason to fear. And the Lord opened his eyes. And when he saw it, I said, Ah, Father, thank you, Lord. But that's not the end of the story. Elisha went out and asked them, Hey, man, what are you doing here? Who are, what, what do you want? Oh, we are looking for this person. Oh, don't worry, he's not here. I know where he is. I will take it to them. But he had already prayed, Father, strike them with blindness. When he says strike them with blindness, it didn't mean that they is like they would their eyes, they, they will lose sight. No, 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 no. Because if you had to do that, you would have to be carrying them and be leading them, leading them by to where he was taking them to. God just blinded their understanding, their reasoning. They just became it is like potty in his hands. And he led them, and he led them straight to Samaria. So, in that case, we can see God opening the eyes of the blind. And we can see God closing the understanding, or, or the eyes even of those who can, who can see. So, we are going to pray. Lord, these two circumstances, they apply to me. Where I have not been seeing what I need to see, Lord, over my eyes. And also, Lord, with respect to me, my understanding, give me understanding. Don't let the enemy take away my understanding from me so that I become put in his hands and he's able to do with me as he likes. We have the capacity within us to be able to see as God sees. Elisha was able to see into the spiritual realm. That was why he was able to have a dominion spirit. So I want you to pray tonight and say, Father, Lord, you have given me eyes. The purpose is so that I can see. From today, oh Lord God, open my spiritual eyes so that I can see into the spiritual realm. I can see what is going on and then I can act accordingly in Jesus' mighty name. I also want you to pray where the enemy has stolen your understanding. Father Lord, let it be restored to me in Jesus' mighty name so that I can do and be all that you want me to be in Jesus' mighty name. Let us pray. Ha <laughs> 
In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I want you to understand that one of the greatest life skills that you will ever develop is your ability to hear God's voice. What you know about God and how God speaks to you is what will determine your destiny, nothing else. If God can't speak to you directly and you have to go one way or the other to be able to hear God speak to you, it shows that you need to mature. It, it means that you are not mature. Because God wants to get to the point where he's able to speak into your ears. You can speak into his ears. He says about Moses, he says, I will not speak to him in parables. I will speak to him clearly. So if God is not speaking to you clearly, that tells you that God, things are, are not the way they ought to be. So I want you to pray. The Father, you've given me years. And these years, they are for hearing you. Lord, train my ears to hear your voice. So that I will know, according to your word, say that my sheep, they hear my voice and they heed it. Lord, train my ears to hear your voice. If Abraham had not been sure that it was God speaking, he would never have left where he left in search of Canaan. He would never have tried even sacrificing his only son to please God. It is important for you to know how God speaks to you. So tell God, open my ears, train these ears of mine so that I will know your voice anywhere. In a thousand four voices, Lord God, I'll be able to recognize your voice that says, God, this is your voice. Because it is only as you know the voice of God and you recognize it that you're able to know whether you need to turn to the light, right or turn to the left. And this skill is so important because you know what? Apart from the fact that it, it impacts your fruitfulness, at some times, it may be the difference between life and death. So you have to know how God speaks to you. So I want you to pray and say, God, train my ears to know and to hear your voice. Oh Lord God, so that I can become all that you want me to be in Jesus' mighty name. Let us pray. Oh, Sanders <laughs> keep 
in Jesus mighty name we have prayed you know God's word or God's voice can be so specific and so finely tuned such that only those who have the capacity to be able to hear him you know God, when Paul, when God wanted to arrest Paul, they saw a flashing light, and that light more or less like blinded them. Is like it startled them. Let's put it that way, and probably they fell down. They heard sounds of thunder. It was an awe-inspiring experience. But you know what? Only one man benefited from that spectacular situation. Why? Because he was the only one that God gave the grace. The difference between being able to hear and not hearing anything at all is the grace of God. When God just opens our eyes, it's as if God speaks in a scrambled frequency. And only those with the decoder were able to unscramble it and enjoy it. So, I want you to pray. Father, give me the grace to hear your voice. Give me the grace to hear your word. Where others are saying, ah, it's it's a it's, it's it's thunder, or it's a storm. Lord, like Paul, I will hear clearly what you are saying, because God told him, "Get up, go into this particular place, a street called Street. You are going to stay there." I have prepared somebody who will be there for you, who will take care of you. Is God spoke clearly to him. So I want you to pray, Lord. Give me the facility to hear you. Like you did for Saul, who became poor, so that I can fulfill my destiny like he did his last prayer. Jesus mighty name. Sanskrit, Rotomoshkin Sakaba, Rotomoshkin Sakaba, Rotomoshkin Sakaba, Rotomoshkin Sakaba, Rotomoshkin Sakaba, Rotomoshkin Sakaba, Rotomoshkin
In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You know, primarily, God speaks to us through His Word, His written Word. It means that when we take our Bibles and we read it, God speaks to us. But you know, it is not every time that we read the Bible that we understand what it's saying. Let me give you an example. The Ethiopia eunuch, eunuch, the Bible says that he was sitting in his chariot and he was reading the scriptures and he couldn't understand it. And the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord led Philip to him. I said, go and speak to that man. And Spirit went and asked him, hey, do you know what, you understand what you are reading? And he said, no, I've been looking at it. I've been trying to, I don't get it. And he invited Philip to come and explain to him. And Philip explained everything. And Philip preached the word to him. And he told him, you need to be baptized. I said, look, what's keeping me? I want to be baptized now. That man took the step that he took. Why? Because the scriptures were open to him. I want you to pray. Lord, open your word to me. Let me see the life that is in your word. You see, in the same way that grace is the difference between those who are born again and those who are not. In the same way that grace is the difference, the difference between those who understand the word of God and those who don't understand the word of God. It is the same way that grace is the difference when we open the Bible to read it and things start flying out. Revelation starts flying out. And some people will just read it and it's just like dead pages. So, why don't you pray, Father? Speak to me from your word. Let your word talk to me. Let the spirit of your word be lifted right off the pages of your word of the Bible and let them start be imparted into my life so that I will experience your life, the life that is in the word of God. So that my Christian life shall be dynamic, shall be full of power, shall be purposeful, and shall be fruitful in Jesus' mighty name. Let us pray. Bakushakabakare, <laughs> E karma to sokus ke disaka ma o te ka pa to to kus ke disaka ma ro ko to sokus ke disaka ma ore le ka to kus ke ba to le mo to sokus ke disaka e o to saka shi mo to sokus a po ore ka pa to so no ke shi ka ba ko le mo to sokus e e karma to so no kus ke disaka ma ro ko to sokus ke disaka ma kus ke na to kus ke na to kus kus ke disaka na ka ba kus ke mo to so kus ke disaka ma ro ko to so no kus ke disaka ma kus ke disi e karma to so kus ke disi ba to ko ni ka da sa no ke po le ka da lo ko sha ka ba ko ni ka da in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We read in the Bible where Jesus Christ said to his disciples, There are things that I want to, I want to tell you, but I can't because you do not have 
you are not able to bear it. You don't have the capacity to bear it. So what that tells us is that it is our capacity that determines the level of revelation that we are exposed to. But the level of revelation is the, what determines the kind of fruitfulness that we'll be able to have. If you have little revelation, you have little fruitfulness. Great revelation, great fruitfulness. But it all depends on our capacity. So I want you to pray that, Father, enlarge my capacity so that I can have the best of the best that you have for me. Lord, take me away from operating in mediocrity, spiritual mediocrity, where all I'm able to have is the crumbs that fall off your table. When you have reserved for me the old bread, even mountain of bread, Lord God, on your table. So Lord God, increase my capacity to be able to hear from you. From today onwards, Lord God, let me be hearing you loud and clear. Let me be hearing you, Lord God, on a higher frequency. Let me be hearing you, Lord God, with respect even to different forms of revelation so that I can become all that you want me to be in Jesus' mighty name. Let us pray. Oh, in Jesus mighty name we are prayed you know implicit in our ability to hear God is also the capacity or the willingness to heed him for many of us yeah many of us the issue is hearing God but for some of us it is obeying what we have heard that's the issue heeding God and the problem that God has is this that if God speaks once he speaks twice he speaks five times and he keeps repeating himself saying the same thing at the point in time you stop speaking because he's saying look you don't value what I'm saying to you. So, your prayer tonight will be, Lord God, just as you have given me the capacity to hear you, give me the capacity to heed your voice. Isaiah 6, verse 2, says, this is he that I will have favor upon. He said, he that is humble and of a contrite spirit. I know this one, and he who trembles at my word. To tremble at God's word is simply means is that we are so afraid of God that we don't want him to say it twice for us. One is enough, he speaks it, and we will do it. We don't even ask anymore because we fear him. The Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If God has to keep repeating himself, is going to keep his mouth shut. And once he stops talking, he's going to take a lot of effort on your part for God to speak to you again. 
So why don't you just pray? Say, Lord God, I humble myself before you. I prostrate my will before you. I declare that from today onwards, you only need to speak words. And I know your grace will help me to just go and do what I need to do. Lord, let me be somebody who eats your word immediately. Let us pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. You know, in my work with God, I understood that one of the challenges that you will face with respect to hearing from God is the challenge of hearing false messages from the devil. So, personally, I told God, I said, Lord God, just let me know that it is you. Once I know it is you, I will obey your voice. I want you to pray. Say, God, give me a discerning here. The here that is able to separate between the lies of the devil and the truth of God's word. Grant me that hearing ability that is not easily deceived by the enemy in order to model my path and to cause trouble for me. Lord, to reduce the incidences of mistakes, of hearing mistakes in my life, so that I can focus more on your word and thus make a lot of progress in my life. Lord God, clarify your word, speak to me clearly, plainly, so that I'll be able to do what you want me to do. Let us pray. Lord, 
In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Finally, I want to pray that Lord God, let today mark the beginning of a new level of experiencing you in terms of being able to hear your word and to receive from you. Father Lord, I think my spiritual sensitivity sharpen my capacity to be able to hear you so that indeed in hearing you I'll be able to heed you and in heeding you Lord God I shall become the fruitful person that you created me to be let us pray Let's just thank, thank you God. Let's start exalting him. Let's magnify him. Let's give glory to his mighty name. Because the Lord shall speak to us. Let's just worship him. Let's magnify him. Let us follow the example even of Elisha, who is like when this, the three kings approached him, wanted to know the mind of God. He asked for a minstrel, and the minstrel prayed, and he was able to, to connect with heaven. Let's pray. Let's thank the Lord that we even as we praise God, as we exalt him, we shall be connecting more often with God and he shall be imparting his grace into our lives. That our lives shall no longer be as they are, but it shall be different. It shall be better. It shall be fresher. Even the anointing even shall increase upon our lives. Let's just give him his mighty name. Let us thank God because we have asked in faith and that God will clear out our hearing, our ability. He is like so that we're able to hear him clearly or more clearly. That he will, able to, he will come in life and fresh. We will live by the word that comes out of his, from his mouth. He, he, we will be able to achieve much more because of his grace that is imparted upon our lives. We will cut this in Jesus mighty name we are prayed our Father and our God, we just want to bless your name. We thank you, Lord God, because once again, the entrance of your word has given us life. Mm -hmm. We now have understanding. Lord, we have asked that you speak to us. Amen. Mm -hmm. That your voice becomes clear to us. Amen. Mm -hmm. That your voice becomes more discernible to us. Amen. Mm -hmm. That, oh Lord God, that you improve and increase our capacity to hear from you. Mm -hmm. Lord, let today mark that point. When, oh Lord God, if you have been struggling to hear you in the past, Father, it shall become clear in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let today mark the past. If you have been struggling to heed what we have heard, from today onward, we shall have the release 
O oh Lord God, to obey you promptly in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. That your fear, O oh Lord God, will drive us to obey you. Amen. So that we experience your glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And Lord God, we are our inability to hear you has ampered our fruitfulness until this point that there shall be a change. Indeed. Lord God, in the same way that your word was able to deliver Jacob from captivity, Lord, your word shall deliver us and set us free in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. That wherever we are, we are feeling cramped and we don't know what to do. Mm. You will speak to us. Amen. And you will cause us to see your way out for us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Lord God, because you are, we are not just asking for a breakthrough. Yes. Lord, by imparting that ability to hear from you, you have given us a skill that lasts for life. Amen. That is why we know, Lord God, Amen. for the rest of our lives, yes. we shall always be confident that as you have promised, we will hear a voice in our spirit yes. behind us saying, stop, go to the left, go to the right, do this, do that. And because we know that when we do your word and heed it, we will see your glory in our lives. Yes. Lord, we know you desire from us a dynamic relationship. You want our relationship with you to be alive and living. Lord God, we say we are willing. We want what you want. Yes. We don't want dead relationships. We want life and living one. We want you to speak directly to your ears so that we're able to know your will, so that we're able to impact our world. Mm -hmm. Let that be our portion from mm -hmm. now onwards until you come in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord God, because you have answered our prayers, Lord. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Let's share the grace of fellowship. The grace. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you. Amen. The Lord keep you. Amen. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. Amen. The Lord grant you not just the facility, but the capacity <laughs> to hear him. Amen. So that his word, his voice will become so familiar, you will never again mistake him in your life. Amen. Thank you, Lord God, because you've answered that prayer, Lord. But in Jesus' mighty name, we are afraid. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming.